Guten Abend, liebe Zuschauerinnen und Zuschauer. Welcome, dear viewers, to today's media commentary revealing background information on this Eurovision Song Contest. But first off, we'll take a quick look at the topic of gender mainstream. Gender mainstream describes the legal elimination of man and woman. Man today, woman tomorrow, and the day after, you're one thing or another. By now, there are over 10 different genders to choose from. The gender ideology understands a person's sex to be a mere choice of their own and is steadily gaining more influence in our legislature, regulations and media coverage. Gender mainstream has been an official goal of the European Union since 1997. The core belief of Jewish head ideologist, the feminist Judith Butler, is as follows. Men and women do not exist. Whether man or woman, it is everyone's solitary choice and is only found or chosen during upbringing or freedom of choice. The gender mainstream package includes the following points. First, equality instead of equal rights for men and women. Second, dissolving sexual identities. Third, fighting forced heterosexual identities. Fourth, the privileging of various non-heterosexual life models. Fifth, the early sexualization of children and youth with mandatory sexual education. This ideology sold to us and forced upon us disguised as tolerance, as we can see it with the latest example from Austria. Last Saturday, May 10th, the bearded singer Conchita Wurst won the Eurovision Song Contest in Copenhagen. Conchita Wurst, born as Tom Neuwirt, performed with a wig, evening gown and a full beard. Even though Conchita's song, as well as his voice, were even considered by the media to be mediocre, the supposed victory is highly celebrated. It is supposedly a political victory. Politics had played a bigger role this time than musical quality. Whoever knows the conditions for a participation of the Eurovision Song Contest cannot get around calling that a dishonest competition. Because one of the conditions states that neither song nor performance may contain any political message. But this is something neither the jury nor the media seem to care about. That Conchita Voss was even allowed to perform is something he owes the Österreichischen Rundfunk, ORF for short, who sent him to Copenhagen without the usual preliminary rounds in a national song contest. The answer to our question to the ORF, why it was Conchita Wurst who had chosen to attend the Eurovision Song Contest was, for financial reasons, we forewent a big live preliminary contest and the Austrian act was determined by an editorial staff. They did not want to tell us exactly which group of people made the decision. In light of these facts, it is almost obvious that this was purposefully manipulated. If nothing else, then to fuel the flames in the Ukraine crisis against Russia and President Putin. It was in his very first interview that Conchita Vos sent the macho in the Kremlin his love in the name of the global gay and lesbian movement. We are unstoppable, he said. As a reminder, Vladimir Putin and the Russian government had passed a law protecting children which forbids the public advertisement for homosexuality in front of children. This was very clearly not a ban on homosexuality. This example shows in all clarity how the gender ideology is supposed to be made palatable for the majority of citizens disguised as art and tolerance. Either we keep on following these gender efforts, or we do as Norwegian people did, who entirely cancelled all financial aid by taxation for gender programs, with the goal of protecting our youth from early sexualization, pornography and genderism, and thus raising them to be responsible men and women. For more information on these topics, watch the documentaries The Founding Fathers of Early Sexualization and For Sex, found here on KTV in the English section. 
The following broadcast, disguised as art, shines a light on further connections of the cult person Conchita Wurst. Stay tuned.